Nock is evolution of hematology analyzer science and what I'm going to be talking about is is digital morphology the pinnacle and why am I saying so is because that's the next thing which most of the people aspire for the digital morphology nowadays okay so there is a glitch already can we go to the next slide please yeah okay the quiz time all right so it's yeah it's retro isn't it so tell me and there is a prize for this dinner on me tonight which movie absolutely spot on so the dinner is on along with the retro theme so roti kapda and makan is what we have all known about and in terms of hematology also let's look at basic needs of life basic needs of life roti kapda or makan basic needs for cbc hematology analyzer microscope slide and a counter yes or no then why the hell am i talking about digital morphology yeah so i am talking about digital morphology because many 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 years ago i was given a talk where i was about, supposed to talk about cell counter data flags and how do we define slide review rules and mind you i was talking about this somewhere in in the 2012 2013 and imagine these rules had come in 2005 so we were already about a decade later you know nearly and today we are talking about digital morphology today when morphol digital morphology has been existing already for decades so why because ye dil mange more as simple as that so we have desires we have you know requirements we have longings we have cravings we all want to do something new something more and that's where digital thing comes in imagine when i was a kid and i would watch sci-fi and i would look at somebody else you know on the television the the one with the long ears i'm forgetting his name yes absolutely spot on once again so the guy would you know look at the screen on front and would talk to somebody and we would think oh my god video calling this is something which is you know not possible but is it possible today is it possible today we just saw it no we were talking to dr jairam yeah so really things are moving on right we are all wanting to digitize we are all wanting to move on and if you remember rajini kant favorite of dr sukesh this is the movie robo 3 of course he was showing us so many things in this movie but we are talking here about digital morphology so when we talk about complete blood count today it's a routine test we know that almost about 30 to 40% of tests in any laboratory is a cbc and in a hematology laboratory it will not be an exaggeration to say maybe 50% of our tests are complete blood counts in hematology and what do we do we screen and the moment the number of samples go up what's our worry we are wanting to look at the peripheral blood film right and that's what in fact there is a lecture about this which says pbf is a window to the human body may not be an exaggeration because a lot of times you are able to actually pick up a lot of stuff in peripheral blood which people are actually oblivious to so i'll start with white blood cells now why white blood cells white blood cells are like w for white and w for woman and they are glamorous the most glamorous cells cells in hematology are the wbcs right and we they are most varied as well just like any other woman extremely varied so you need to figure out which wbc are you dealing with right and every time when you see a wbc the variability amongst all of us is huge right have you ever tried to see monocytes and myelocytes right there are times when you classify one to the other especially when they have some granulations here and there so therefore when you look at wbcs 
This is one area where perhaps digitization would make it very, very good. Now we know that cell counter, we've been always professing about cell counter all these years. We've been saying, let's get a cell counter and cell counter will do our morphology. We talked about hemocytomorphometry. So what are we now trying to do? We are now trying to go back, the retro part of it, going back to morphology. And therefore, that's where the whole picture comes into the being. Now, what is your wo usual workflow for CBCs? You get a sample of blood, you push it into the analyzer, you get a printout out of that, you analyze either manually within your technical staff or you have an algorithm based in your middleware and you define whether you'll make a smear or not make a smear. Yes? Yes or no? Yes. So we all do the same. And then eventually we review a smear, but that review has to be done by us. Majority of the pathologists will do it on the microscope, and then we will authenticate the report. So look at this. What do you have on the left-hand side here? The scatters, the histograms, and most importantly, the morphology. So morphology has not really moved on. Morphology has to be there. It is a part and parcel of our life. Now, I was, as I was trying to prepare for this talk, I went through this very interesting article where it says, if I don't do morphology, it's blasphemy, right? And it says, and the Oscar goes to the peripheral blood film, right? So the Oscar still goes to the peripheral blood film, and therefore we need to have the blood film, which is nice, beautiful, having all its colors in the right proportions, and which can be accessed even when the slide has been discarded. So this is where the entire picture has come about. There's a lot of discussion about it, which ISLH has also been doing, ICSH has also been doing. And they, of course, have given us the slide review criteria to make the slides, to reduce the burden for us. And they've also started talking about how digital morphology is to be taken care of. How do you validate it? And how do you take about going ahead with the digital morphology today? So why did you have a cell counter at the first instance? Your aim was to reduce your manual labor and to reduce the work of reviewing the smears. Yes, but at the same time, you're also worried about missing your cases. There are cases wherein everything seemed to be normal and yet you had a small little parasite over there, right? Now what if I tell you that post flagging and if you want to see a smear, we go on to from the manual microscopy that we were doing previously where we were looking at the microscope, getting a slide made, looking at the blood film, getting these pictures into, the, in our, into our mind and eventually reporting it out to something which is all digitized you know, which is all going on to a digital platform. And why am I professing for it so much? Since last two and a half years, we've seen reaching the laboratory at times became a big challenge. And you would want to see a digital picture and give out the information. So this is the current workflow in any laboratory. You have a sample coming in. You are actually, you know, getting your analyzer to work on it, getting the results, making a smear. Technical staff will review it. It'll reach you and eventually you'll report and sometimes you might want an expert opinion. To get the whole thing done, if I immediately put it onto an automated platform and get the whole thing done, my manual smear, the limitations with the manual smear review will go down markedly. And that's where it becomes useful for us. I'll not get into details of why digitization because I've already explained the whole concept to you. And next comes the concept of artificial intelligence which is what something Dr. Poonam showed us in one of our present, in the presentation, wherein artificial intelligence is actually having what is called deep machine learning, identifies cells on a regular basis. Dr. Mishra was talking about, you know, having that bucket where the cells were not identified and eventually trying to identify those cells subsequently as well. Yes, when you go into artificial intelligence mechanism, this whole concept keeps on evolving and eventually you're able to get and differentiate between various cells. So this is a methodology which is used by Sigtuple. There's also the methodology used by Cellavision, which I have had the opportunity of working on both the machines in my center. And in all of them, eventually you get to see your images appropriately. It eventually actually segregates the cells into various subtypes. And through the system of artificial intelligence is able to actually pinpoint few differential diagnoses, sometimes actual diagnosis. There was a question about bone marrow is it possible to review a bone marrow? So this is an article which I have 
you know, pulled out from the internet, wherein they are looking at bone marrow morphology through the help of digital imaging and eventually artificial intelligence and actually classifying the disease, wherein they were looking at morphology of megakaryocytes and looking at myeloproliferative neoplasms and telling you that, yes, indeed, it could be an MPN. This is a study where, again, they have looked at using the artificial intelligence, how they have clubbed diseases into various subgroups within the MPN group also and even other leukemias. So is it possible to do this on a, on a digital platform? In fact, it is only possible to do it on a digital platform because if you try to do it manually, you will take many, many man hours and that's why artificial intelligence and uh, digital platform is here to stay. So when we talk about digital morphology and setup and its implications, a few things which we need to remember, we have to have how do we select, what do we put on digital morphology. You can't have, you have 400 samples in a lab, all 400 cannot go on to a digital morphology. So you'll have to be very selective. Which ones do you choose? Do you want a whole mount image or do you want selected areas to be you know, looked at? Currently, if you look at majority of the digital platforms for hematology, they're not looking at the entire whole slide image. They're looking at selected areas which are put across to you. Of course, trading, validation, and optimization is what needs to be done. But what is important at the end of the day, you're able to get clinical correlation or not. So the algorithms need to be defined. The inter-variability between the pathologists needs to be looked at. And most importantly, what you see in this picture on the right-hand side is the possibility of going across and getting second opinions. And that's what makes it very useful and beneficial. Just showing you a few quick case studies. These are a few from Sigtuple, a few from, uh, from the Cellavision, and some of them from the Mindray one, which we now have our, at our place. The one which Poonam showed you previously. This one is from Cellavision. Look at the clarity of images. Beautiful, you'll actually be able to pick up cases, uh, you know, from remote access also. A chronic lymphoproliferative disease, plasma cell leukemia. Mind you, all these cells were actually very few in the entire smear, but they were picked up individually and that's why you were able to pick them as a diagnosis. Look at the RBCs. We did see some of the presentations previously where microcytosis, poikilocytosis, etc. can be a challenge. However, the same thing when you see from a digital morphology imaging platform, all this can be picked up very easily and beautifully. Again, this is from Cellavision, Rule Formation. Sickle cell disease, if you look at this picture, you may not be able to pick it out directly, but when you look at it from a near vision, you will be able to get your sickle cells and they'll be picked up by the software on its own. Again, malaria, somebody was asking about whether you can pick up uh, you know, infections. Yes, you can. So there are a lot of things which can be done potentially. Of course, the toxic granulations, the dole bodies. We saw all that in some of the presentations previously. Hairy cell, disc granulopoiesis, myeloblasts, dysplastic erythroid precursors, platelet and isochromia, something which most of us don't even bother looking at in a usual case. Again, satellitism, so one of the most beautiful pictures that you see. We have recently uh, had the opportunity of looking at this. It's still in the process of actually getting installed and hopefully we will share something with you in near future. I believe they are claiming that they have a much better clarity and I would like to work on it and see and give you possibly the information in my next cube. And uh, the advantage which they have suggested is that there is a possibility of looking at platelets all along the entire breadth and the spread of the uh, slide. So, uh, just to leave you all with the images to enjoy, and of course the tea which is waiting outside. These are the images from blasts, some normal lymphocytes, some other cells like the neutrophils and the eosinophils, etc. Myelocytes, and of course the faggot cell which you can see at the top, such beautiful images which eventually come out of this, these analyzers. So the take home, it helps you to standardize your system uh, you know, you're able to automate, you're able to transmit images across to people, you're able to get second opinions on the data which is coming out from there. And of course, you can have what is called the electronic health records as well as improved turnaround times. I wish I would have had this digital platform earlier in my center because I wanted to look at a marrow today and I could have seen it here while delivering a talk here itself. 
Nevertheless, next time, for sure. And the final take homes, it is only as good as you give it to be. So if you don't have a good slide, we saw that in one of our experiments in our lab, wherein the slide quality itself really mattered. It started picking up certain globules within the glass as something which was abnormal. And later on, we realized that we needed to change our slides. So it helped us in that as well. So we have to get good quality slides, stain it correctly, take an appropriate image, and only then are we able to classify and give the right information across for the patients. What is most important is, by this I'm not trying to tell you that none of us is required. I think most of us are still required and will always be required, and it's the man behind the machine which actually is important to ensure that whatever the computerized algorithms come up, they are taken care of, you know? While it may be important for us to realize when we go into a plane, a lot of times the pilot is actually just sipping coffee and doing nothing and putting the aeroplane in an autopilot mode. But just imagine if he's not there, you wouldn't take off, and if he's not there, you wouldn't land appropriately. So important point, man behind the machine is still very important, and hopefully we all will digitize someday, and maybe we'll all share more digital images in the next cube. Thank you very much.